All right, so in this video, we're gonna make a pair of pom-poms here. And these are made of rabbit fur. And they have a buckskin uh, lanyard or cordage attached to it. And this is how you would affix them to something, um, where it'd be a pair of uh, mucklocks or uh, moccasins or uh, choppers, you know, gloves, a hat, trapper hat for a hat or something like that. Uh, or you know whatever however you want to embellish maybe they're just just decorative so at any rate they're pretty fairly easy to make it's pretty straightforward and uh, I'm going to be doing a kind of a, a bunch of smaller videos uh, of just kind of more like rustic uh, crafts type things and there's always something in it that, that 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 one can get from these sorts of videos or these sorts of crafts that can aid in the more hardcore survival type situations. For example, um, this would be a cool. This is a would be a cool, cool way to tie on some bait um, that wouldn't be wouldn't be very easy for your uh, your prey to what you whatever you're after to to pull it off. Okay, um, this is also a cool way to make some bolos. All right, bolos are the 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 Argenti Argentinian gauchos or the Argentinian Cowboys use uh, bolos to instead of a lasso, bolos to to throw at the legs of any cattle that they're trying to, to uh, wrangle, and it entangles their legs. You know, um, so you could do this this technique with leather balls to make a pair of bolos, which you know that could be another uh, type of weapon as well. Uh, so the, making a kind of a bag as well, because uh, the technique on how to make these it's basically like making a small bag. So there's, you know, I'm hoping that um, from a conceptual standpoint that in some of these smaller videos and some of these more what people might consider frivolous videos, especially if they're like hardcore survivalists, um, is like pom-poms, I don't need pom-poms, what am I making pom-poms for, what's that about, you know, well, there's, there's all kinds of things that one can learn that can come, become useful from sometimes the most frivolous things, so bear with me. <laughs> Uh, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start making a pair of these um, uh, cute fur, rabbit fur pom-poms. Alright, so um, I'm gonna go th walk through how to make um, a set of fur pom-poms. Uh, they're really mainly just decoration. Um, this is a good embellishment. Um, to add to, you know, a hat, um, to coat, uh, to uh, mucklucks or moccasins, um, or just wherever. Um, nowadays, I've seen um, that uh, last time I was in uh, Japan, there were pom poms as keychains were kind of all the rage. So I'm just gonna put that, put this out there, just to kind of um, add, you know, add a little something extra. Uh, so. What I've got here is I've got, um, you know, probably need a utility blade um, or, you know, if you were doing this primitively, obviously a really sharp rock like a piece of obsidian, of obsidian flake or, um, or a really sharp knife. A pair of scissors will work just fine as well. But when working with fur, a utility blade is better. Um, I've got some artificial sinew, so basically some cordage, some sewing thread, um, actual sinew or... A plant fiber thread should work. I've got a an S needle. You'd probably need to use a bone awl to do the same thing. And um, I've got some some cordage here or ribbon. Uh, and this is just buckskin. I just took a just took a rectangle, rounded out the the um, edges, and just cut around. Probably keeping about a quarter of an inch, uh, maybe a little less, around the whole uh, circumference as I cut in a spiral to get this long um, piece of buckskin cordage. So this is what we're going to use to tie the pom-poms together. Um, I've got um, a, a, some tissue paper here and this, we're going to use this as a filler. Uh, you, sometimes you don't really need a filler. Um, I like to add a filler. Uh, you could use uh, old scraps of um, cloth, uh, cattail down, uh, dandelion down, or you know fluff, that kind of stuff. Then we have, um, I just have like um, a sauce saucer, a little sauce saucer. It's about 
two and five, uh, excuse me, three and five eighths, no, excuse me, two and five eighths in diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this size out and I'm gonna make a download uh, so you all can uh, visit uh, my website, the uh, theurbanabo.com and you can download this um, if you don't wanna make your own, but you know, you could just use the back of or bottom of a cup or a saucer or a bowl or whatever to make a perfect circle, circle for the size that you want. And so this is the one that I'm using. And then of course we've got um, fur, some rabbit fur. Uh, fur bearing animal is going to work the best. This is store bought fur. Um, I didn't trap this or, or hunt it or it wasn't uh, fresh, emphasis on the fresh uh, roadkill. Um, like a raccoon or, or squirrel or um, pretty much anything and if you are into harvesting roadkill uh, make sure that it is fresh uh, you make sure that it's lawful for you to do so in your state some some states you have to have a license to do so uh, or special permit some states um, like mine is not really a big deal if you you know find something that's freshly killed and you want to make use of it uh, so it just doesn't go to waste um, but this is store bought so no worries there so anyways um, I'm gonna go ahead and I've traced out the uh, the hole here or, or the circle that we're gonna use just like so and the rabbit skin is really kind of thin all right the fur is very insulative um, but the the skin itself is very thin so actually when you're tanning this when you're tanning with the fur on and you're you tanning um, you know, deer or excuse me when you're tanning rabbit or fur bearing animals uh, that have thin skins you have to be very careful about it um, squirrel is, is especially like that so we're going to go ahead and take um we're going to take our utility blade here and it's better to cut with the utility blade because if i take a pair of scissors and just cut this out which will make it really quick this fur is just going to go everywhere so you're going to end up cutting the you know the fur and the under I think it's the under fur and it, it just makes a mess and it gets every place so it's better just to use a uh, uh, utility blade to make your cuts so you can kind of stretch it out and just be careful and um, you're just really cutting the dermis cutting the skin so I'm getting on there yeah so I'm cut this this is just take your time. See, doing it within a utility blade is not its not so much of a mess as using scissors. So it's not so much fur that's going to end up flying everywhere. And of course, you can use faux fur. You don't actually, if you're not, this that makes you uncomfortable or you don't have access to this, you can go to the uh, fabric store and um, faux fur would work just fine. Fake fur. done there okay so always sheathe your blade always sheathe your blade get in the habit of doing that um, all right so now I can gently lift up and then we have a nice little perfect circle with very little muss very little fuss um, with the fur trust me so what I can do is I can grab a plastic bag and gently collect this up and shake it into the bag so I can you know all the fur can disperse okay I'm gonna take my little saucer here and I'm gonna go ahead and just trace an outline it's okay if I use pen you know you probably should use charcoal crayon or a graphite um, if it really bothers you but no one's gonna see the uh, ink so I can use uh, 
I can use uh, the uh, pen just fine. So I've traced this out and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out just like I did before. <laughs> 